Welcome to video four for week one. In the previous video, I defined the idea of an iterated integral. Now I'm gonna do some examples so you can sort of see how it works. So say I have a function of two variables. Here's a function e to the x plus e to the y, and it's defined on the interval zero, one, cross three, six. So the x bounds are zero, one, the y bounds are three, six. I wanna figure out the volume of this fun the graph of this function, or the, vo <laughs> the volume under the graph of this function over top of this interval. So I can do this as an iterated integral. I can choose whichever order I want. I want to make sure this matches. So if the y it goes from three to six, then the inside is the y and y, and outside is the x and x. Notice these have to match from inside to outside. So if I group this like this, I have the y bounds inside and the x bounds outside. That means I'm going to do the y variable first. I always move from the inside out in these. Although before I do any of that, since this function is a sum, I'm going to split it up into two pieces by linearity and do the two pieces separately. So now I want to integrate this in y, I want to integrate this in y. This is a constant in y, so the integral is just y, and then I'll evaluate the bounds. It's not necessarily standard to write y equals, I'm just doing that at the start because it's really easy to confuse y bounds and x bounds, or in R3, y, x, and z bounds. So if it feels more comfortable to write which bounds you're talking about, to write y equals three instead of just three, please do so. The antiderivative e to the y is e to the y, so I evaluate that on the bounds as well. So that's where I was in the previous page. So here I'm going to have y is 6 minus 3, it's going to be 3. Here I'm going to have e to the 6 minus e to the 3, so that's going to give me this. And that's finished the inside step of each of these, but I still have an integral, I still have the outside integral to do an x. Uh, here, antiderivative e to the x is just e to the x. I evaluate it from x equals 1 or x equals zero to x equals one, so e to the one minus e to the zero. Here, this is constant, so I evaluate it, uh, a antiderivative is just x, I evaluate x from one to zero, so that's just gonna be one minus zero, so I just get this e to the six minus e to the three, and this number, whatever this works out to, is gonna be the volume under the graph of this function on this interval. Please notice at this step, from here to here, the y variable is gone. So as soon as I do an inside piece with a certain variable, that variable should not show up in this step. The only variable that should remain is the x variable, and then when I evaluate in the x bounds, the x variable is gone, and I just have a constant left. Here's another example. x squared y cubed over negative one to one cross negative two to two. So again, this is some height map over this interval in the xy plane and I want to know the volume underneath that graph. So here I'm going to integrate the x inside and the y outside, just to switch up the order a little bit. So I have an x integral here, so x integrates from x squared to x cubed over three. The y cubed is just a constant as far as the x integral is concerned, which I have to leave it where it is. So then I evaluate, I was doing an x integral, so these are x bounds, so I evaluate at one, subtract, evaluate at negative one, um, subtract a value in a negative one is going to be negative negative is going to be positive so this is going to work out to 2y cubed over 3 and then I'm going to integrate this again that integrates to y to the 4 over 6 evaluate that on the bounds it's going to give me 16 over 6 minus 16 over 6 is going to give me 0 which tells me that this graph over this interval actually has equal volume above and below the xy plane like with a single variable integral area above is positive area below is negative. Here, volume above is positive and volume below is negative. This zero tells us that the volume above the plane and the volume below the plane cancel each other out. I'm gonna switch the order here just to show you that I do get zero whichever order I do. So now I'm gonna do the y inside and the x outside. Same function, same interval. So now I integrate the y first. Uh, the y goes from y cubed to y to the four over four. I evaluate on the bounds of y and that's gonna give me two x squared minus two x squared, and already I'm gonna get a zero here. And if I integrate zero on any interval, I just get zero. So I do get zero in either way, either order, as Houdini's theorem tells me I should. One more example for this video. So here's the sine function, sine x plus y, on zero to pi and zero to pi over two. I'm gonna do the x inside and the y outside. So the x is inside, so the x bounds match. The y is outside, so the y bounds match outside. Again, always working from inside to outside. Antiderivative of sine is negative cos. Uh, the inside here in the chain rule 
or the inverse chain rule doesn't give us anything else. So I evaluate that on the bounds, evaluate that on the bounds. In most of this course, I'm going to go pretty quickly over the sort of steps of the antiderivatives and the evaluations. Feel free to check the arithmetic, of course, if you want. But a lot of what we did in Math 205 and Calculus 2 we'll take as uh, for granted. Likewise, if you want to do any of these by computer for the antiderivatives, that's perfectly reasonable for you to do so in this course. Uh, here I have negative cosine shifted by half a period. That's actually just the same thing as cosine. If you shift it by pi, you get a negative, so the negatives cancel off. So I'm actually going to get 2 cosine y. Uh, the antiderivative of cosine is sine. Evaluated on these bounds, multiply by 2, gives me 2 as the answer. So this function over this interval, the volume underneath the graph of this function over this interval on the plane is going to be 2 cubic units.